props out. You brought props? Well, press clippings, stuff like that that, you know, I got some pretty wild stuff and it, it's hard to believe if you don't see the press clippings. For instance, did you hear about me getting 4,000 marijuana charges dropped? <laughs> At one shot. No. And I'm not, I know. I got the story. It says a case in Toronto, but it didn't mention me. How did you get 4,000 charges against you? By proving that the exemption had not worked for two years, and therefore you have to have an exemption for sick people to have a prohibition. Therefore, while there was no exemption, there was no prohibition. Okay. And they. The only thing with this is this is not going to show up on camera very well. Oh, okay. Well, right? anyway, so you... I can just do this. But okay. There's an example. Just so you know, like, yeah, there's no way that people... You can All read right. that, but people aren't going to be able to see that. They're going the only... to know I'm saying I'm putting okay. 4,000 and you're going, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? There it is. 4,000 pot charges, me smoking a doobie on Parliament Hill and being taken away by the RCMP. Okay. So what does this have to do with the KW by-election? I'm going to cut funding to marijuana policing. Okay. But that's, that's, that's minor compared to the other stuff. All right, talking. perfect. Uh, Popper Party of Ontario, right? Yes. And are you, did I read it correctly, are you the founder? Yeah. Okay, so that's, yeah. that's correct to say that? Yes. Okay. We founded it last election. Okay. That was kind of neat. Didn't even know we could. Oh, maybe that's the first question then. Why did you feel the need to, f um, to, to start up this party? Okay. Um, well, anyway, here's another cute one. You remember the Millennium? The Millennium Assembly in 2000 with all the world leaders at the UN? Yes. Uh, the important ones, I mean, you got uh, you got uh, Ehud Arafat, Tony Blair, Chinese Prime Minister Bill Clinton, and John Turmel. And I gave a speech on banking. <laughs> because I founded a political party in 93. What party was that? Abolitionist. Oh, ran, okay, I think I read that too. Ran for Prime Minister, and that got me invited to the UN. Well, that's impressive. And then a girl who belonged to a Let's in Australia said, this really helped me, a single mother, having a network of other mothers to take to my IOU to babysit their kids and they babysit mine back. <laughs> Time banking. Good idea. And she said, this works, so they invited me to do the speech on banking. Nice. <laughs> Imagine you need walking around the UN with a white hard hat on, okay? If that didn't freak him out. And are you wearing this now? I'm, I'm just going to introduce, say, uh, this is how most people have seen me okay. at demonstrations. Maybe we can put and it I'll... off the table so it doesn't block the view of you? Okay. Is that gonna, okay? I was going to leave it there. Is that okay on the camera? Or here. Okay, that's fine. You can All leave right. it then. All right. Yeah, and I'll talk about the LET software, uh, you know, in the big Edmonton article. I just pointed out, big page on, you know, barter. Okay. And, and, and same thing in the UK, sustainable local economy. So anyway, I'll just flash them. Okay. You know? what, what, I, what I think we should touch on is jobs and the economy. Um, we do have a question about tuition rates. We'll throw to a streeter question. Yeah, right. Then we can talk about health care, education, environment. We all have right. a tweet about nuclear project costs. This is all being right. asked of everyone. Yeah. And we have an email as well okay. to go to. All right. Are, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Sorry, let me... Oh, sorry, sorry. it's going to be over no, here. No, no, no. You're ah. looking at me. This is All my right. camera. That's your camera. But just look at me. All right. Okay. Yeah. Casual conversation. All right. Fair enough. I'll be showing you the stuff. Yes. All right. Fair enough. Should I where is to start? No, we'll wait. It's up to you. Yeah, yeah. Just to open until I say, hi, I'm John Termel, then I'll say... Explain why the hat, take it off. Okay. All right? Fair Sounds enough. good. Yes. Whatever you like. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's 20 minutes. Um, we do have hard breaks. Everyone needs equal time. So I'll, if you can see me here, I'll give you about a one minute. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. That's your minute. Finish what you need to say. Wrap up your thought. Thank you, John. And I go to right okay, break. Okay, perfect. Yes. At the 19 minute At the 19 minute mark. mark. All right, great. So a minute to wind up. Yeah, yeah, we're fine yes. in two minutes. Sorry. Oh. Two minutes. Yes, sorry, I didn't hear you. I just said in the last minutes to wind up. Yes, yeah. All right. it's, it's the whatever. Yeah. Finish your thought, get your last point in, just, right. yeah. At one minute, I just, when that's done, I do have to go right to Don't right. worry, I'm good thing. at this. Yeah, I'm sure you've done it a few times. After 77 Seven, elections. Is this your 77th or yeah. your 78th? 77. 77, yeah. I thought so. I think I have that written down. And 75 losses so far. Oh, so you won two? No. Or one? No, no. 
<clears throat> it was called off. The Guelph by-election, and then on the last day, Harper called the general, which called off the by-election, but it still counted oh. at Guinness. So I had 76, 75 going in, yeah. and when I registered, it went to 77, okay. 70, elections contested, gotcha. to 70, and soon, number six, it'll probably be 77, 76. Do you have a number you're reaching for? No. No, just... No. Well, I mean, just don't forget, if you YouTube for Prime Minister of the Planet, I'm the only guy who'll come up. Because <laughs> I'm the only guy talking about something that can fix the whole world. Okay. That's why my video won the Occupy Wall Street Silver Bullet Award. Nice. Okay. Wild stuff that happened in the last year. I'll, I hope to blow your money. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you for watching Talk Local on Rogers TV. Of course, we are interviewing, uh, sitting down with all candidates who are running in the Kitchener-Waterloo by-election. So in the studio with us now, we have John Turmel. He is actually the founder of the Popper Party of Ontario. John, welcome. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. And the reason I wear the hat is I first ran in politics in 1979. And uh, as an independent, you have to come up with some sort of an angle or a, a prop. And because usually I'm the only engineer running in the election, I decided I'd wear the hat as my symbol. And I go to all the demonstrations and the Occupy, and I protested the Bank of Canada in the 1980s when most of your parents lost their houses at the high interest rates for five years every Thursday. So it's been a really handy symbol. And if people want to laugh at me, they, they can say they're laughing at an engineer who's trying to save their boat. But uh, I ran that first election to legalize gambling. Okay. Because I was the teaching assistant of Canada's only mathematics and gambling course in 1974 to 78. And that's when they first developed the blackjack counting system. So I became one of the first card counters and had one of the first card counting teams in Las Vegas to beat them. And uh, when they started barring me, I said, well, how come I can't, I can play a game of skill like poker legally and I can't play blackjack, which is now a game of skill legally. So I said to the police, I'm going to run games of blackjack where you can bank me back, and that makes it fair. Well, they still busted me, convicted me, and so I ran for parliament to legalize gambling because I wanted to be able to play in Canada and not have to go to the States. And they asked me about inflation, and I said to myself, inflation? How come the poker chips in my casino don't inflate and the government's coins do? What's going on? It's the same hardware means inflation must be a software problem with how they go in and out. So, I did an engineering analysis and I figured out that we're being lied to when they say that interest fights inflation. So here's how interest works. Really, mortgage means death gamble in French, or mortgage, death gamble. You're the banker, everybody puts up their watches collateral, you lend them all 10 chips, Say at the end of the game, I want you all to come up with 11 chips. Well, at the end of the game, only nine guys got 11 chips. Tenth guy gets squeezed out, you take his watch. Hmm. Say to the winners, how many chips you got? A hundred? Gee, now there's only nine watches. Your chips have inflated. Well, I told that to the Dragon's Den when I pitched them Brad, you know, Brantford Bucks and interest-free barter system you know, years ago. They didn't get it. But they cut my statement when I said economics teaches inflation is an increase in the money chasing the watches, the chips. Shift A, I'm the discoverer of shift B, inflation. Same money chasing less watches. They cut that second part out and said he makes no sense. The point is, why would economics teach only inflation is up over there, more money, and not talk about down over here, foreclosure, collateral, what's going on? A whole science looking only at up over here, but won't look at down over there? And I claim to be the discoverer of down over there? So, anyway, basically, I said to myself, we got to run money like poker chips. It means if you got collateral, you can come to the bank, you can get an interest-free loan based on the value of your collateral with the poker chips, like a real casino would do. All right? And then you use those chips interest-free. Now, the idea I have is used by the Argentines, and that's going to solve all of our issues later we talk about. In 2001, Argentina was broke. In 2006, all their foreign debt had been paid off. Now, most people have heard about the banks shutting down, but they never heard about all foreign debt paid off back in action. What happened? Well, the unions, smart people down there, 
but they're desperate because they were all being laid off. They said to the government, who had no money, we're not going to go on strike, and we're not going to take any layoffs. We want you to print up some small denomination provincial bonds, and we'll take them in our pay if we can use them to buy HTML, hydro, taxes, medical, and licenses, because everybody else in the province will take them too. Now, instead of bringing your bond to a bank to get a million in cash, spend it, tax it out with interest, they now simply printed a million in one peso bonds, spent it, taxed it out, no interest, except now they could do three shifts on the machinery fixing the roads, three shifts in the hospitals, double staffing. Anybody willing to do work, useful work for the community, can be paid with bonds. And that's what they did. Now, sure, they got saved, you didn't hear about that. Now in Russia, the same thing happened in the 1990s. The banking system crashed, you didn't hear anything about it. Well, they had huge online barter systems helping, but this news article just made it out this year, and I posted it on my Facebook page. 750 local and state governments in Russia paid people with their own currencies, their own bond bucks. And 25,000 corporations paid their employees and bought stuff with their corporate currencies. So Canadian tire money became accepted everywhere and Shell Bucks, and McDonald's Bucks, and Burger King Bucks, and Eaton's Bucks, and if you've got no federal cash, and you're a trustable corporation, who isn't going to take your piece of paper? Well, they proved it. And they did all their big online trans their big transactions online. So if they're going to transfer a million rubles for so many thousand tires, well, they're going to do it online rather than give them a paper IOU. But they issued, if you're going to, if your boss can't pay you, why don't you take product? Now, down in Argentina, they had these huge barter fairs with seven million members accepting these Creditos time barter chips that they put out themselves. Seven million people when the system crashed. That also helped. So, the Russians just basically pointed out and saw that, wow, if you've got a barter fair going on and your boss can't pay you, take some product and go down to the barter fair. So if you go look at the videos right now online about Argentina with the crash and the Kritos barter systems, you'll see all these people coming to the barter fair bringing their product from their boss who can't sell it for real cash. So those governments who switched and started paying their employees with provincial bonds paid off all their national foreign debt in five years. And that didn't make the news. Now, because that can be done anywhere, I mean, in Canada, our teachers union, I was at the demonstration in front of Queen's Park the other day, and I was handing out my flyers saying, hey, the Argentine teachers union saved their jobs by taking their raises in bonds. Actually, it was all their pay, because they had no money. Here we can still get given money, but we'll give you at least your raise in bonds. And I have a video at my site during the last provincial election. I was at a midwife clinic birthing, you know, and they're complaining about insufficient raises like all the other health professionals. And I said to the lady doctor in charge, and I interviewed her, and I posted her interview, I said, would you accept your raise in Ontario provincial bonds you can use for hydro taxes, medical, and licenses? And she went, of course. So there's no reason for any government employees to ever have to go on strike if they're smart enough to say, we want to be paid with this, as opposed to, we want to be paid with money you don't have. So, we have examples of where governments have used provincial bonds to do that, and earlier historical examples. One quick one, King Henry the Great, the first in 1100 in England. He took us, he had no money, short, wanted to repair the kingdom, took some sticks of wood, printed 10 pounds of gold on it, then he split it in two. This part was the chip of the king that he paid, fix me a bridge, gave it to the duke, and the other part was the stub that stayed in treasury. So that at tax time, when they have to pay the depreciation of the bridge, and he calls in, you know, so many tallies, they had to bring them and they had to tally up. And that's where the expression tally up comes from, from King Henry I paying his employees, government employees, with the king's own paper, and it was a completely uncounterfeitable system. What a brilliant man. Now, Lincoln did the same thing during the, during the Civil War. The U.S. Treasury issued treasury notes. Same idea. And then they stopped, and now they're in debt to the Fed. 
Well, Dennis Kucinich down in the States wants to restart issuing treasury notes to pay for repair of infrastructure. And given the Hiroshima, I mean Fukushima catastrophe that's raining nuclear fallout on us right now for the last year, and they have to, they've got worse. They've got, basically, the stupidity of the nuclear thing that happened there is that instead of storing the nuclear waste in a pool below ground, you need 20 feet of water above it to stop it from exploding, they went and put it in above ground pools. And if it leaks, it explodes. Now, talk about stupid. Well, there are 26 of similarly engineered plants in the United States with five, ten times more stored fuel because they've been working longer. And if one of them goes, by, there's North America gone. Well, anyway, and then, uh, one of the nuclear engineers on video said, in three years, we could encase all that stuff in cement and store it, but we got no money. And here's Dennis Kucinich saying, let's set up treasury money to pay them to clean up this nuclear and do everything else. So, but they're not making the news. Nobody knows about his Bill 2990 to end the Fed and replace it with something, as opposed to Ron Paul, which is end the Fed, or oh, audit the Fed. He ain't even ending it yet, but no replacement. This has been done before. There are people around the world in different countries pushing it, but the banking system, as we know it, the loan shark system, is collapsing in Africa right now. Now the 99%, they're broke. They got no bank accounts, the 1% own everything. But all the 99% got cell phones, okay? They've all got cell phones. And because of Muammar Gaddafi, Saint Muammar, and we killed him, he set up the satellite for Africa, which allows them now, they can now text transfer some cell phone minutes from their account to the account of the butcher in their mama's village. Hmm. All right? Okay. So, cell phone minutes are the new currency in Africa online, so why can't we trade our cell phone minutes? Because we still got collateral they want to foreclose on. John, we're about halfway through our interview, so I do want to get to an email question yeah. uh, from a viewer. Yeah. Uh, this is from Bradley. The candidates have been doing a lot to criticize decisions made by governing liberals and what their parties will do to change things. They present the vision of their parties, but that vision encompasses the entire province with little mention about Kitchener-Waterloo. So what are candidates going to do for Kitchener-Waterloo should they become an elected representative of the people who live here? Well, I'll give you an account like I'll give every other person in Ontario an account. Okay. My solution is not locally specific. I can install this Let's local empl employment trading software on any database. That's why I ran locally to install Let's for the locals, provincially to install Let's for Ontario, and federally to install Let's for Canada. And if you YouTube for Prime Minister of the Planet, I come up because I want to install UniLets. I got invited to the United Nations. You were saying that? In 2000. Well, back in uh, 1993, I had been busted for running the biggest gaming house in Canadian history. Um, there it is. 28 underground tables. <laughs> and I made a million bucks, which I had to spend right away. So there was an election that year. I founded the Abolitionist Party, ran for Prime Minister with more candidates than the Greens. Then in 2000, that got invite me invited to the UN to the Millennium Assembly because I was a non-government organization. And there was a clerk in one of the committees who'd been helped by Let's in Australia, a single mother, and she told the chairwoman, this is something that works, why don't we push it? And these stalwart women got the resolution, Millennium Declaration C6, to restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time-based currency. Now, what does that mean? Well, I told you about the apartment building of single mothers who list which nights they're available for babysitting, and then I give you an IOU for the hours you take care of mine, and then you take it back later, and they trade these time dollars around. Well, uh, same idea now at the United Nations, Unilets is the United Nations International and Local Employment Trading System. So if I can email you and I, when I traveled to Europe in 99, I paid for 39 nights out of 40 with an IOU for a night back in Canada. So Worth then, five okay, hours. then let's apply this. So if we're talking about education, healthcare, other things, how, how, how would this work? I so would, you don't pay all right. I will money be, for your call it, uh, tuition, no, no, let's no, no, say. No, no. I, okay. will, I want all students to have an interest-free loan like I did to help me get my education. And I don't mind paying back the interest-free loan for my education. Short six-line poem in politics. 
I'll pay my tax for army and police to handle strife. I'll pay my tax for doctors, nurses who protect my life. I'll pay my tax for all engaged repairing road and sewer, three shifts I hope. And I'll pay my tax for social servants helping out the poor. I'll even pay my tax for bureaucrats with no regret. I only object to paying tax for interest on debt. So, if we can cut the interest on debt, basically we're always getting something for our money. Now, the Unilet's idea is simply a worldwide trading system. When I went to Europe, I sent them all an IOU for five hours a night because an hour in Canada, we pay ourselves 12 green dollars. In the States, 10. In France, 60 green francs. In Britain, 6 green pounds. In Germany, 20 green marks. But between countries, we trade hours which is the numeraire, the thing we all relate to. So that's how I could travel 39 nights out of 40, pay with an IOU for a night back in Canada. Well, I'm setting up a system like that in Canada right now, goldnuggetnetwork.org, where people will be able to log on and list what accommodations they want to offer. And once they're offering a group or themselves a place, well, then now they can travel because we trust them. But do you trust them? Who's to say? Who's who's taking a look at this? Who's making sure that if I give you this, you're going to give me that? Well, is it, is your it name a is verbal your, agreement? Is no, that your name is posted in public? That this guy came and he helped you move, and he spent 16 hours over the weekend helping you move, and then he's going to post later on when I asked her to help me back a year later, she wouldn't come and she was just goofing off. So that's going to go up on his post. But he still lost to 16 hours. No, 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 no. The point is the whole database. He's not counting on you to pay him. We will. Get it? Let's say we have a mentally retarded cousin and we want him to have a nice life too. He gets his interest-free credit card. He gets everything that's available in the storehouse, food, clothes that we can, you know. And then when he dies in the negative, we all divvy it up over the database in an instant. Now, positive people will have a potlatch. And here's what I won in my lifetime and I'm sharing it out. So, I trust in my gold nugget uh, network barter system, I'm giving everybody one year's worth of credit. I think every kid can be trusted to give me back 2,000 hours over the next 50 years of his life. Don't you? So, am I going to not trust a kid who says, I want to give you an IOU for you know 30 hours if you'll sell me that motorcycle? And I'll come and do this and this and blah, blah, blah. He's got his little list of what he's willing to do online. And every time he's ever gone to clean that park, and anybody can create their own job. I do accordion concerts every Tuesday at an old folks home in Bradford because it's practice for me and they love it and there are thousands in heaven and I'm the last good time they had. So, but I put it up on my website. I put in two hours volunteer community service. So we have an account at the network where you can log on and register your volunteer hours. And if people appreciate what you did, I did the Humane Society 20 hours a week for 10 years Boom, all those hours when you want to travel. Other people with humane societies are going to trust you. So, it's a way of volunteers getting credit for their past stuff, hours put into our society they never got, and then trading these hours amongst ourselves. So, what can I say? The world is changing, and I'm hoping to get it done by Christmas because I've got a million to one odds out of a British bookie. William Hill Bookmakers, probably one of the biggest bookies in Britain, and they gave me the biggest odds last year. They did, a million to one. And I said, I bet the Mayan prophecy comes true. Now, people say, why would you bet if the world's going to be destroyed? How are you going to collect? And I say, well, either the big change is going to be from this to worse, or it could be from this to better, <laughs> okay? Because this ain't all that good, is it? So I'm betting that by the end of the year, we can have everybody in the planet logged on to the Unilex Time Bank so they can have access to food. So, At here's the end a, of this year. Well, how long do you think it would take to up, get the Facebook people to open an account? You know, boom, Facebook does it for the large okay. database. Hey, I automatically accept the cell phone minutes from Africa. I automatically accept the one-hour bills from Argentina. They all count. So, that was the point. The bank, every transaction we do with alternative currency, the bankers get no interest. You get it? Every cell phone minute that moves around in Africa, in the old days, they had to borrow it at the bank, move it around, get it back with interest. Well, now they can move things around and the bankers are getting no interest, which is why the banks are going bust. Okay? Okay. John, about a minute left. Right. Uh, 
I guess what 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 what, what would you like people to know? In well, I'd situation? like you to know that it, believe it or not, to fix your situation is as easily as getting access to the Bank of Canada's computer, so you have an account there too, interest free. You borrow enough interest free to settle all your mortgages and your debts and your interest bearing loans. And after that, all your payments go against principal. So you're not beating the debt. You're paying for the stuff you got. Okay. You're only beating the interest. Okay. John the Engineer Turmel. John Turmel, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, founder of the Popper Party of Ontario. Well, that was the quickest 20 minutes, John. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly know. wasn't bored. I know, I know. I know. I got 300 videos at YouTube. I, I so. know, I Googled your name. <laughs> Quite a bit comes up, sir. Yeah, I've been busy. Well, anyway, you're running for prime minister. To put it this way, I'll probably never get elected in a small election. And then one day, there'll be an online election where the guy with the most brains goes viral instead <laughs> of the guy with the most money. But I we mean, can only hope, right? Well, it's coming. You don't see the internet elections coming someday? Oh, I hope so. You think money's going to matter much then? Hey, he's got a lot of money, you know? Like right now, the big money pays for him. I'm uploading a video of me being arrested the other night at the thing. And, of course, first time I've ever done this, I said, I'm going to take the video of those guys, and I'm going to play it, and I'm going to cut them up mercilessly the whole two hours, and that's what I did. I'm going back to, I just, I just finished rendering it now. I'm going back to upload it. It's like two and a half hours. Well, the first five minutes, me getting arrested and taken away. But I mean, if they let me stay, I could only cut them up for one minute every now and then. But now I got to cut them up for the whole two hours. And I got a vicious mouth. Is that yours? Yes. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I got a record, too. I mean, I this I is history. I think I should be signing something for you. I don't think I agreed for you to take me. Maybe uh, I'll take you to the Supreme Court, John. This is the... Actually, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an interesting argument because tape recorders are legal in the courts. And in, in, in judicial uh, pros, I use them all the time. All the time. Okay. I don't know, because we've, I mean, I haven't covered a court case probably in five years, but last I knew you could not, and you had to interview them out on the court steps. Let me tell you the rules. Section 130, you can go online and check this. Section I believe one, you. Section 136 says that since 1989, when Chief Justice Howland wrote a direction to the practice, he said from now on, Section 136, which says that you may not tape record. Section B says, ah, except... For those people who are self-defenders, reporters, or lawyers who may tape record for their notes uh, okay. without asking for permission anymore. So, now I started in 88. Then in 89, the Chief Justice ruled it bigger, but no one's ever... Hey, think about the lawyers who could have had a tape recorder all day and, just, away in the and just gone yeah. home and uploaded the archive I mean, you don't have to wait for transcripts to remember what was said. Imagine how efficient a lawyer would have been if he had done what I did all my career. I've got, well, look, these are eight, I didn't go into the marijuana at all. These are eight cases I have in the Supreme Court of Canada right now. And this one here is from New Brunswick. Wow. And I got fights going on in eight provinces. So I... I not only made him drop 4,000 charges. You are a busy, busy man. I don't well, know how you do it. Libertarian ideals. I'm going to legalize gambling, prostitution. Hey, shy and ugly people got a right to get laid too, right? Anybody want to spend money on cops chasing shy and ugly people who want to get laid? <laughs> no. Whenever I say that, people always give up and realize how stupid that prohibitions are. And same with marijuana and same with gambling. What stupid waste of money. So, if I get in, I cut funding to stupid prohibitions. <laughs> no matter what the feds say, I'm not paying cops to do this, okay? They're going to go out there and get the thugs, but not the smokers. Cops and gardeners is over. <laughs> but anyway, I got a guy with 3,000 plant grow up, big, 80,000 stolen hydro charged. Well, he filed one of my little kids. The government has to file this much in response. This guy had already crowned had already done three more. He originally said a year and a half in jail. Two years later, he says, I'll tell you what, can you come up with 4,800 for the 80 grand? He went, yeah. <laughs> and then he, he says, um, will you do house arrest? 
Yeah. So they were going to give him house arrest from 10 till 6, and he said, I work at night, so the judge gave him from 4 till 6. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so that's the kind of reason. Anyway, yeah, I'm busy. I couldn't get into that, but. That's okay. Let's hope Maybe that the next people, time. Let's hope you like the bond idea. Um, Elizabeth. Okay.